Hello students, welcome to the SRBPS Virtual Classroom Program. I am your Biology Educator, Prerna Rathi. Alright then, let us start today's class. Today, children, we will be discussing the fundamental unit of life, that is chapter 5, that is we will be discussing about cell, its components and you know how it makes life. What is a cell children? Cell is a structural and functional unit of life. It performs all the basic functions that together make the entire function of an organism. Also, when it is repeatedly you know, used in a structure, then the entire structure is made and hence it is known as the basic structural unit of life. Who discovered cell? Robert Hooke in the year 1665 discovered cell in a piece of cork. What did he do? He cut a very thin slice of cork and kept it under a primitive microscope and observed it. He could see certain compartments uh, under the microscope and those compartments he named cellulae. Cellulae being a little typical term, only the cell part was used from it and from then onwards they were called cell. Some cells can change their shape, as we already know, amoeba, it has pseudopodia, it can change its shape. The plant and animals also have certain cells, you know, uh, which have fixed shapes. There are WBC, which are animal cells, white blood cells, which can change their shape. The smallest cell that is known on the surface of the earth is a PPLO, pleuro-pneumonia-like organism, which is a mycoplasma. The largest single cell is an ostrich egg. The longest animal cell is a neuron or a nerve cell in humans. Depending upon how many cells are present in an organism, there are two types of organisms, unicellular and multicellular. If an organism is made up of single cell, then it is known as a unicellular organism. For example, amoeba, paramecium, these are unicellular. Multicellular, as you all know, many cells are present like plants, animals, fungi. We are all examples of multicellular organisms. Here is a diagram of amoeba. Can you see clearly? There is a plasma membrane or the cell membrane. There is a specific nucleus. Contractile vacuole which help in the movement of the amoeba. Pseudopodia or the false feet which help in engulfing the food. This is a multicellular organism cell. This is an animal cell and we will also be seeing the plant cell. Let us first discuss the animal cell. As you can see, this is the nucleus of the animal cell. Inside the nucleus, there is nucleolus and chromatin material. That is the genetic material is present. Surrounding the nucleus is the endoplasmic reticulum, which is further divided into two types. The rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. If there are ribosomes present on the endoplasmic reticulum, then it is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then there are ribosomes which are protein factories. The liquid part is known as cytoplasm, the liquid matrix. Fine, there are mitochondria which are the powerhouse of the cell. Cytoskeleton means other supportive structures. The outer membrane is known as the plasma membrane. Then there are lysosomes which are the suicidal bags or the digestive bags of the cell. Fine, now let us just discuss plant cell. Now, unlike the animal cell, plant cells have, give me one second. Plant cells have nucleus that is pres present in the periphery fine then there is endoplasmic reticulum both smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum both are there like the plant cell like the animal cell but they have a vacuole which is large they have a large central vacuole they have golgi apparatus they have mitochondria another thing that they have unlike the animal cell is the chloroplast chloroplast is the structure which has chlorophyll it is responsible for photosynthesis and it is not present in the animal cell apart from that the outermost structure can you see this structure this is known as the cell wall the cell wall is not present in an animal cell the outermost membrane there was called plasma membrane whereas a plant cell has both cell wall as well as a plasma membrane fine so cell is the basic unit of life we've already discussed how it performs all the functions and all the larger units are made up of cells a typical cell is made up of mainly three parts the nucleus which contains the genetic material the cytoplasm which has all the organelles and the outermost covering known as the cell membrane 
The cell membrane is also known as the plasma membrane. It is the outermost covering which is a living membrane. It is very delicate and it is selectively permeable or semi-permeable in nature. What does the term semi-permeable mean? It means it allows only certain selective materials to enter and exit the cell. Also, this plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer and proteins. What are the functions? It keeps all the contents in a particular shape. The shape of the cell is because of the plasma membrane. It provides mechanical barriers. Bahar se pathogens ko nahi aane deti hai. Also, it selectively allows the movement of substances. Next, now in order to discuss the movement of substances inside and towards uh, the outside of the cell, let us discuss two processes. Those processes are diffusion and osmosis. Let us first discuss what is diffusion. Diffusion kya hota hai? It is the movement of solute particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. That means, jaha par solute zada hoga, solute wahan se kaha chala jayega, wahan jaha wo kam hai. Example is exchange of gases during respiration. If oxygen is more outside the cell, then oxygen will be taken inside. Fine. Then now carbon dioxide is more inside the cell. So carbon dioxide will be given outside. So this movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide is known as diffusion. The next process that we have to discuss is osmosis. The movement of solvent particles like water from a region of low concentration of solute to high concentration of solute through a semi-permeable membrane is called osmosis. Example is absorption of water by roots. This is an example of osmosis. We will discuss the term osmosis further when we discuss types of solutions. There are three types of solutions based on their osmotic concentration. The first is a hypotonic solution. The solution which have lower concentration than others. For example, if we consider a plant cell, if we have a given solution, if you have a beaker make solution, if you have a solution, mein, salt concentration or solute concentration, kam hai, then that is called a lower concentration or hypotonic solution. If it has more concentration of solute, then it is called a hypertonic solution. And if it has equal amount of concentration like the living cell, then it is known as an isotonic solution. Hypotonic, hypertonic and isotonic solution. Now based upon what kind of solution you are using, the process of, an, of osmosis is of two types. If the water moves inside the cell, then it is called endosmosis. Endosmosis kab hogi? Jab hum usko hypotonic solution mein rakhenge. Hypotonic solution mein, solution mein pani zada hai, cell ke andar pani kam hai. The water will move inside the cell and thus cause swelling up of the cell. In the second case, which is exosmosis, agar aap hypertonic solution mein rakh denge, to aapka cell shrink ho jayega because of loss of water. This process is called exosmosis. Whereas in case of isotonic solution, no swelling and no shrinking. The next thing that we have to discuss is a cell wall. Cell wall is a rigid, semi-elastic, semi-transparent and protective covering that is present outside plant cells, fungi and various prokaryotes. It is not present in the animal cells. What is the function? It gives shape to the cell, provides mechanical strength to the plants. It protects them against pathogens, mechanical inju injuries. Growth of the cell wall determines the growth of the cell. When the cell wall has taken its final size, that means the cell will not grow further. Also, it prevents the bursting of the cell during endosmosis and exosmosis. Dono hi time pe. Endosmosis mein usko crush, uh, burst nahi hone dega. Exosmosis ke time se crush nahi hone dega. The next structure that we have to discuss students is nucleus. I told you nucleus is actually the brain of the cell. You know, it is going to govern what kind of characters will be given from this cell to its progeny or its future generations. It has dense protoplasmic uh, fluid inside it and it, it has all the hereditary information inside it in the form of chromatin material. In case of animals, it has a central position, whereas in case of plants, it lies towards the periphery. Periphery means border. Can you see? This is the diagram we've already seen there also. There are certain hole-like structures called the nucleopores. There's nuclear envelope. Any double membranous structure is known as nuclear envelope. Chromatin, which is the genetic material, and nucleolus, which is the site for synthesis of ribosomes. What is chromatin? Chromatin is the thread-like material which is made up of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid and proteins 
this is basically the genetic material that will be passed on to the next generation what are chromosomes ye chromatin jab properly pack ho jata hai properly condense ho jata hai it forms structures called chromosomes these chromosomes are actually the hereditary vehicles these chromosomes are inherited by us from our parents they are made up of dna and proteins can you see this diagram this is a diagram of a chromosome the central structure is known as a centromere whereas these are known as sister chromatids arms are known as chromatids understood next is the cytoplasm it is the fluid present between nucleus and the cell membrane it contains number of special organelles such as mitochondria golgi apparatus vacuoles ribosomes lysosomes etc so all these structures are contained inside the cytoplasm let us discuss one by one let us start with endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is a complex network of membrane bound channels there can be channels there can be sheets there can be tubular structure or there can be round vesicles it is connected to the nuclear membrane and plasma membrane across the cell pura connection dega it has cisterne it can have tubules or it can have circular structure called vesicle it is actually the endoskeleton jo function hamari body mein hamari bones perform karti hain ek cell ke andar wo function kaun perform karega endoplasmic reticulum perform karega there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum the rer and the ser smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum is made up of tubules and vesicles it does not have ribosomes on its surface and it is responsible for synthesis and secretion of lipids and steroids rough endoplasmic reticulum on the other hand consists of cisterne tubules vesicles all three types it has ribosomes on its surface ribosomes are protein factories so rough er is responsible for secretion and synthesis of proteins in a cell then next we have the golgi apparatus everything that is synthesized by both scr and rer is passed on to the golgi apparatus which is a double membrane structure again which has cisterne vesicles and vacuoles all three types golgi apparatus is involved in repair and synthesis of plasma membrane whenever there is an injury of the plasma membrane golgi apparatus is going to repair it lysosomes which are vesicles which contain proteins or enzymes are formed by the golgi apparatus all types of substances which are to be excreted are packed modified and stored by the golgi apparatus so its function is storage modification and packaging of various biomolecules like fats produced by scr and proteins produced by the rer this is the diagram of the golgi apparatus can you see there are two phases the cis phase and the trans phase the cis phase is the packaging phase and the trans phase is the forming phase from where it will you know become a vesicle and come out next are lysosomes the lysosomes are commonly known as the suicidal bags they are found in animal cells but they are not present in plant cells in a damaged cell jab bhi cell ko koi injury hogi lysosome kya karega burst ho jayega enzymes ko release kar dega aur us cell ki death cause karega that is why they are known as suicidal bags what is the function destruction of foreign particle normal condition mein wo kya karega koi pathogen aayega to usko maarne ki koshish karega intracellular digestion karega रिमूवल ऑफ सेल डेब्रिज अगर किसी सेल की डेथ हो गई है तो उसकी जो रिमेन्स हैं उसको वहां से रिमूव कर देगा डेब्रिज मीन्स द मलबा द वेस्ट दैट इज लेफ्ट देर फाइन दिस इज डायग्राम ऑफ अ लाइजोजोम देर आर हाइड्रोलिटिक और ब्रेकिंग एंजाइम्स प्रेजेंट इन साइड The next organelle is the mitochondria. It is again a double membrane structure. The outer membrane is continuous, where the inner membrane is uh, folded many a times to hold structures called oxisomes, which are responsible for production of energy. That is why mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell. The energy children is formed in the form of ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate molecules. These are the energy currency of our body. Can you see the diagram now, everyone? see this is the outer membrane continuous whereas the inner membrane is folded fine f not f1 complexes are nothing but oxisomes where actually the energy synthesis is going to occur next we have plastids plastids are double membrane structure which are only present in plant cell they are absent in animal cell plastids are of three types agar wo green color ke honge to chloroplast ग्रीन के अलावा किसी और कलर के होंगे जो फ्लास के कलर होते हैं इट विल बी क्रोमोप्लास अगर वो कलरलेस होगा सिर्फ स्टोरेज का फंक्शन परफॉर्म करेगा तो वो क्या हो जाएगा ल्यूकोप्लास्ट हो जाएगा 
तो बेसिकली क्रोमोप्लास्ट क्या करता है फ्लावर्स और फ्रूट्स को कलर प्रोवाइड करता है ल्यूकोप्लास्ट विल स्टोर प्रोटीन स्टार्च एंड ऑयल एंड क्लोरोप्लास्ट विल हेल्प इन दी सिंथेसिस ऑफ फूड दैट इज फोटोसिंथेसिस प्रोसेस दिस इज द डायग्राम ऑफ अ क्लोरोप्लास्ट Lastly, we have vacuoles, which are also called the storehouse of the cell. The plant cell has large central vacuoles, whereas animal vacuoles are small in size and they are present many in number. In plant cell, vacuole is full of cell sap, and that is why it pro provides the rigidity and turgidity. The maintenance of shape of the plant cell is by the vacuole. Fine. In case of animals, it is just a storage organ which pr stores proteins, amino acids, sugars, etc. Okay, so plant cells have a large central vacuole, which is an organ of osmoregulation. That is why it is very important. Understood? That's it. I hope you all understood all the concepts of this chapter. I hope you all understood what I taught. I suggest you all make complete use of the YouTube channel to enhance your learning. So until next time, goodbye. Take care.